Hi, hello. It is another video in that uh, big scientific channel discoversocialsciences.com. Another video which is an educational about business models in the media industry, in the film, in the film and TV production industry. Uh, this series of videos about uh, those videos about business models in the media industry are uh, the whole series is specifically addressed to my students at the Andrzej Fritz Modrzewski University in Kraków, Poland, to students of who, who follow the major of uh, film and TV production, and uh, with me. In my curriculum, they learn the basics, the fundamentals of management in the media industry. Uh, so, in this video, I want to focus on the business model of a gaming company. If 15 years ago or 10 years ago, someone would say that gaming is part of the media industry, it would be an arguable claim, but right now we can safely say that video games are an integral part of the whole industry of entertainment and entertainment media. And this is why I study gaming companies and in this uh, video I am studying one specific company, uh, a Polish gaming company CD Projekt. Uh, which is which might be known to some fans of gaming uh, for its game The Witcher, the game which gave rise, for example, to the Netflix show The Witcher. Okay, so uh, here is the thing. In this video, I am going to show you the latest annual reports, so the financial report and the management board report of that Polish company CD Projekt. I found on their investors relations site those reports in the English version and I will show those reports to you and discuss it along the same lines as I did in my previous videos in the same educational path. So in my previous videos on business models in the media industry. If you have followed these you know that I have already compared Netflix as a business model with Discover, uh, Discovery Communications, I'm sorry, as a business model. And in a second video, I dived a little bit more into Netflix as a case. Uh, now, I very much like using financial statements of companies to deconstruct their business models and this is what I am going to do in this video. Uh, so you can see here some financial concepts which might seem uh, like alien to you, unknown to you. Try to Google them up. If you cannot find any suitable definition, you can just ask me a question via a comment to this video or to the post on my blog, discoversocialsciences.com. Anyway, we go there. So, here is the consolidated financial statement of CD Projekt. I will show you some facts, some interesting facts about uh, that specific financial structure, and you will see sort of a strange business model, very different from, you, uh, from what you can see with Netflix, for example. So let's go there. Okay, I take on the financial one. I magnify it. By the way, all the gaming companies, virtually all the gaming companies put in the reports those uh, like screenshots from their video games. It is just like a sort of presentational style. So it is the, cons uh, the consolidated financial statement of the CD Projekt Group for 2019. Just let me quickly check what it looks like in the video window. Okay, it is acceptably readable. Maybe if I magnify it a little bit, yes, 
Now I think that you can see it better. Anyway, I go to the uh, statement of what is called the financial position of or uh, what in other words is called the balance sheet. It is uh, that specific financial statement called the balance sheet or financial position is, if you want, the capital account of a business. It gives you the idea of where capital comes from into that business and how that capital is being used. I usually start with the, with the so-called active side of the balance sheet or the active side of the financial position, so with the assets. Uh, once again, a reminder, assets are essentially things and rights that a company or any social entity has and holds for use. Uh, assets come into two categories, fixed and working. I remind you the distinction, because understanding that distinction might be important. When you run a business, you can notice that you have that in your in, in, in your business you need like two groups of things and rights. There are things and rights which you sort of need to be there, like installed and ready for use. Uh, this is mostly equipment, but not necessarily, but these are the so-called fixed assets. And there is another category of things and rights in a business which you can notice that you need them to sort of circulate, uh, to, uh, to make them move, in order to make the business move. And these are working assets, also called the current assets or circulating assets. The formal distinction between fixed and working assets is that fixed assets are those which stay in the balance sheet of the company for more than one year, for more than 12 months. And the working assets are those which stay for, let's say, less or very precisely stay for less than one year or for less than 12 months. So here is the active side of the balance sheet with CD Projekt. Here you have the state of their balance sheet at the end of 2019. And comparatively, here in this column, you have, the, uh, you have the state of their assets here at the end of 2018. So first of all, uh, we, when we take the bottom line, so that when we take the so-called total assets, I will annotate it with a yellow highlight just to make it more visible. You can see that those total assets, uh, total assets, excuse me, by the end of uh, 2019 here, was a bigger number than the total assets uh, uh, at the end of 2018. It means that there has been more capital, there had been more capital injected into the business. It was uh, uh, all those numbers are supposed to be in thousands of Polish zlotys. So mentally, at the end of each such uh, each such figure in those tables, you add you add like three zeros. To make it sort of fully under understandable. If you add mentally three zeros at the end of that number, you will have the number in monetary units in Polish Lotus. So you can see a phenomenon called accumulation of capital. You can see that this company, CD Projekt, has accumulated capital. They passed from one billion 126 millions of zlotys at the end of 2018 to 1.4 billion of zlotys in capital invested in their business. 
By the way, for those of you who want to, to compare it like internationally, one Polish zloty stands approximately for uh, one hundred uh, for twenty-seven U.S. cents. Maybe I will mark it here. PLN one equals give or take twenty-seven American cents. That's the uh, the comparative scale if you want to compare it with any international or with any business from other countries. Now let's look, let's play a game which I frequently play uh, with my students. So in that whole list of figures, in that whole list of assets in that business, let's look for the two biggest figures, for the two biggest numbers uh, in that whole list. And it is easy to find, really. The biggest number, by far, is this. Bank deposits maturity beyond three months. You can see that it is 432, almost 433 millions of zlotys. It is the biggest single figure in the list of assets. So it is essentially cash. And this is the peculiar characteristic of this specific business, of CD Projekt, of a gaming business. For, I think, three years now, they have been holding very large amounts of cash. This company behaves largely like a bank. They have money, they have capital from their shareholders and from their, uh, and from their debt holders. And they put that capital mostly on bank deposits. Mind you, if you sum up those two categories here, cash and cash equivalents with bank deposits. And if you compare their total combined magnitude over those two years, the, the amount, this amount has shrunk during the year 2019. Something has changed in that business. And the, thing, and the second biggest figure in the balance sheet is this, expenditures on development projects. So money essentially invested in the games under development. It is a business model, as, it, as we can see, where capital, wherever it comes from, is being uh, invested mostly in like a portion of cash held in reserve, a very large chunk of cash held in reserve and in progressive development of gaming projects. So that's the first trade. Now we come to the passive side of the balance sheet, so to equity and liabilities. To be specific, or once again to remind you the rules of interpreting that passive side of the balance sheet. Liabilities is what the company owes to external entities, what it owes to third entities. When you subtract total liabilities from uh, the total uh, value of assets of a company, we stay, you stay with equity. So you stay with like own investors capital uh, or own investors share in the total capital invested in, uh, in in the assets of the business. So let's first have a look at the proportions between equity and liabilities in the total capital owned and used by the company. As you remember, after having have a look after having had a look at the active side of the balance sheet, you can, you can remember that the total amount of that capital is 1.4 billion of zlotys. This was the amount of capital active and put in the business by the end of the 2019. Now, 
as you can see here on the on, on the passive side the majority of that capital is equity so it is not money owned uh, or it is not money owed to external entities it is money which is sort of free of third person's claims and this is an important difference as compared to netflix which i studied in my preceding video with netflix most of the capital they use comes from long-term liabilities here in the case of cd project most of the capital they use comes from shareholders own equity and that's a major difference now if we have a comprehensive look at that list of both equity types and uh, liabilities and we play the same game so if we look for the two biggest numbers we find two of them the the single biggest figure in that uh, list of sources of capital is this supplementary capital 780 millions of zlotys it is something that i already explained uh, with the case of netflix and with i think the case of, with, of discovery communications too you have those two categories, share capital and supplementary capital and other reserve capital. When you start a business, you put some equity initially in it. It is like the initial starting equity of the business. And you, and you can see that this is pretty constant. It is 96,120,000 zlotys. This is the share capital. Supplementary capital is the, is the capital like paid in addition over that initial share capital. Um, it is paid mostly as like additional installments paid by some strategic shareholders. And finally, you have a reserve capital, which under the Polish legal system is like an, it is an obligation for a company to create financial reserves in the form of the other reserve capital. And anyway, you can see that that supplementary capital is the biggest single figure in the sources of capital uh, of CD Projekt. And now I will teach you a little lesson uh, about uh, using uh, the financial statements of a company to um, like understand their business model. Here, next to those numbers in thousands of zlotys, you have those figures like 24, 24, 25, 26, and so on. These are numbers or consecutive ordinal numbers of uh, the so-called explanatory notes to the financial statement. And those explanatory notes uh, give additional information what is the meaning of those numbers and now we will quickly practice uh, how to use those notes okay so here is that number 24 i click on it oh it doesn't work okay so i will like scroll down to note number 24 Uh, let me quickly screw note 17, note 18, note 22, note 23, note 24, other capital contributions. You can see that those 780 millions of zlotys, almost 781 millions of zlotys, are essentially reserve capital. In other words, this is retained earnings from the past years. And this is like a common trait, I think, across all the businesses in the broadly spoken media industry. I could see it in Netflix, I could see it with Discovery Communications, I can see it here. 
In the media industry, you essentially are haunted by uncertainty. You can have excellent financial years. You can have years when you like make tons of money in terms of profit. And you can have very poor years when you don't really have much profit to retain in the business. So the intuitive move across all those businesses is to retain a lot of profits inside the company in the form of, for example, reserve capital, just to have a financial buffer for those poorer years. Okay, let's go back to the balance sheet. So to the, concept, the statement of financial position. And so we go back, we have that supplementary capital as the single biggest figure on the passive side of the balance sheet. And now we look for the second biggest. And the second biggest is this. Deferred revenues. 161 millions of zlotys. And there is an explanatory note associated with it. Note number 35. I went there. I will not bother you right now with the scrolling down to note number 35. Anyway, uh, the essence of the thing is that it is a very strange financial construct. The essence is that CD Projekt has some deals with customers, with clients, like for example with digital platforms which distribute uh, video games. Technically, there is some money, there is some like billable revenue that CD Projekt should bill those platforms with. CD Projekt should bill those customers with some amounts of money, but they don't. I don't really know what is the deal behind it, but they don't bill them. And so they like push into the future some revenues which technically right now should be uh, already receivable from those customers. And they show, as you can see, those deferred revenues. So the money they don't charge their customers with, they show it as short-term liabilities which those customers finance the business with. So you have a quite a strange, quite a strange uh, financial construct when the, the money that customers should technically be owing to that business, to that city project business, is considered as a source of capital for the company, but what is even stranger, it is shown as a short-term liability of the company vis-à-vis -vis other entities. It is extremely strange. Uh, honestly, I see something like that for the first time. And my essential diagnosis about that CD Projekt business model is that they have hard times to adapt their business model to the creative process that is going inside the company. As you might know, their like ongoing big project is a cyberpunk game. Uh, maybe I will now switch to the to their management board report to show you like a glimpse of what they do. Yeah, you can see here it is the face essentially given by Kian Reeves to the main hero of the cyberpunk game. And this is like their main ongoing project, the launching of the cyberpunk game. Anyway, I, I return to their financial statement to like complete the picture. My point was that CD Projekt is a company which has hard times with like connecting their business model and their financial flows with 
the creative process that goes on inside the business. By the way, it is a common problem in the media industry. Uh, creative industries in general are quite hard to like schedule and pace in terms of output. If you have a factory, you can predict the pace at which those manufactured goods will be leaving the factory and will be sold to customers. With creative industries, it is much harder to nail down, especially that launching a big video game like Cyberpunk is a process that takes many years. And uh, it is hard to make a match between the financial flows in a company and the creative process that goes inside of that business. And here I am introducing a, an, another type of financial statement to show you that connection between the process, the operational business, and the financial flows in the business. I am I'm going to show you the statement of cash flows. Yeah, here it is. Statement of cash flows. Uh, just for the future, because this is just one video among many in which I am showing um, those business models in the media industry. The statement of cash flows follows the basic logic of following the money. You probably know that saying, follow the money. Follow the money if you want to understand some phenomena. And uh, in the cash flow approach to a company, we assume that a business is like a pump. It sucks money on one side and it spits it out on the other side and there is a, resi a residual amount of cash like left in the business. And we assume that cash flows in a business have like three basic streams. There are cash flows from operating activities so this is the cash flow from the business that you can like see being done. Huh? It is like development, sales, uh, uh, the work of an office team, that operating activities. Then you have investment activities and investment activities just let me quickly check how it is visible in the window. Oh, okay. And investment activities are essentially about assets. So it is about acquiring new assets into the balance sheet of a company or disposing of some existing assets. And finally, there are financial activities. And financial activities are all cash flows that take place on the passive side of the balance sheet. So it is any change in liabilities or equity. And as we go through those cash flows of uh, CD Projekt, we can see, and when we compare those cash flows in 2019, so in that column, with those in 2018, and, if, and when we look for like big changes, we can see a few important changes. The most important is here, change in receivables. Change in receivables. Uh, so by the end of 2018, the cash flow or, or in 2018, CD Projekt added 8 million lotis to its receivables. To, so to the revenues build to their customers, but not yet paid in cash. The change in receivables in 2019 was minus 126 million zlotys. By the way, in the uh, it is a common financial notation that you have negative numbers in round parentheses, like here. Huh? It is a negative value here. So. Here we come once again to what I already signaled you. CD Projekt is performing that strange financial operation when they push into the future, they push forward in time, 
the moment of charging their customers with some actual receivable revenues. It is some kind of operational deal, which I don't know the details of. It looks a bit shady. It is early. As, if, as financial constructs come, this one is a little bit wobbly, I can say. So this is one big change. They changed their, like, their customer relations. And there is a big change in other assets and liabilities here, plus 115. Anyway, they have, an, they have a nicely positive cash flow from operating activities here, 2,030 million of zlotys as compared to almost 142 million in, 2019, in 2018, I'm sorry. Now, investment activities. Once again, here is another strange thing. You can see the biggest figures here in those investment activities are these. Closing bank deposits, 870 millions of zlotys. This one. And as outflows, you have opening bank deposits. 600 and uh, 748 millions of zlotys. So once again, it looks strange because the most important operations on assets that CD Projekt seems to be doing are operations on bank deposits. So it looks a little bit as if that company was a bank instead of being an IT and gaming business. Okay, I will be slowly ending this educational video about business models in the media industry. Once again, you had the opportunity to see like the inside working of a gaming business here, of the CD Projekt business. CD Projekt is a Polish gaming company specialized or known for, for example, the Witcher game and now working on launching the cyberpunk game. You, can see, you could see here a very strange business model. It is a business model where the company, where the management team has harder times to connect really the financial flows and the capital flows with the creative process going on inside the company. And uh, there is like a shady part in that business model. We don't really know how it happens, but it is a business model where the fact of foregoing some otherwise due revenues from customers is like a source of capital for that business. And that, honestly, I don't like. And I don't like it even more because I have some stock of CD Projekt in my personal investment portfolio in the stock market. And as far as I know, money can come to my balance sheet from the past, but not from the future. We cannot like take money from the future and put it now into our capital account. It is impossible. It is a, a little bit of a shady operation. I assume that they will get it straight, but that I am going to be sort of cautious with that. Uh, with that CD Projekt investment position in my portfolio. Anyway, as usually by the end of each of my videos, I wish you to have fun with science and to have fun with life. Bye.